All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. And today we'll be doing yet another run of the 4.6 Spiral Abyss. And today we'll be doing a classic Hu Tao double hydro team, proving that she has not fallen by the wayside just because of Arlequino's release. And on the second half, we'll be doing another type of boom team because it is honestly one of the best for the current Abyss and one of the more underrated teams in the game right now. So, yeah. Uh, when it comes to the teams themselves, like I said, it's going to be a classic Hutao Double Hydro team, so not the Shenyan Plunge variant, rather just a regular Singcho, Yelan, but then we will be using Diona in place of Zhongli, so that on the second half we can run uh, Nublet, Nahida, Kuki, and Zhongli. So yeah, these are going to be the, the two teams we're using, hopefully you guys enjoy, and yeah, without further ado, let's just get right into the run. Alright, and here we are in the first chamber, and we get ourselves a max HP buff, which is nice for both our Hu Tao and our Nivellet. Now, what we could do here is we could run off to one of the edges to prevent the one of the guys doing their little dash attack. But honestly, I feel like they're just going to group up soon anyway, so... Okay, yeah, there we go. And I mean, Hu Tao, if I'm being honest, isn't exactly known for her uh, AoE damage, other than her burst, where we do a nice 140k, but... You know, um, I don't want to make sure I am killing these guys about evenly, although it would be nice to take out the Frost guy, because if there's one thing that's annoying about Singcho is him applying Hydro to himself, so if he were to die soon, I would not mind, okay. Also, the one nice thing about the HP buff is the fact that it gave our Diana thicker shield. Now, obviously, since we are using Zhongli on the other half, we can't use him here, but Diana's very much holding off her own, especially since there's quite a few cryo attacks on this half, so, you know. She can resist those pretty easily. You know, we're doing about... Okay, never mind, I've run out of stamina. Was that... Am I seeing, like, over 100k charge attacks? I'm... I might be blind, but I guess we'll see... It'll probably be easy to see on Capalius. I mean, anyway, we are on the second half now. Um, luckily, ooh, Actually, maybe we might want to group these guys up instead. There we go. Okay, nice thing is, Nahida will mark them, so they'll both be taking damage. Anyway, hopefully they don't split up too much. You know, maybe push this guy a little bit. Okay, there we go. Nice. Okay, yeah, these guys just die easily. I mean, Novelet Hyper Boom damage is just insane, if I'm being completely honest. Uh, maybe we can stagger these guys or just kill them straight away. Okay, that works too. Like I said, if you need a very strong Novelet team, no Novelet Hyper Bloom all the way, my friends. She managed to even get herself stuck in a bubble. I think that's the first time I've ever seen that, but uh, I am not going to complain. I mean, you know, Nivellet's personal damage isn't the highest on this team, but, I mean, just Hyper Boom does so much damage, and it also gives him all three of his stats. Okay, that's annoying, but, oh well, I guess it is what it is. Might want to try avoid those a little bit. Oh, there's so many cores there. It would be so nice if we could proc all of these with Cookie, and there we go. You know, 34k on Hyper Blooms is nice for us. Uh, the one problem about this chamber is these guys are incredibly annoying, although luckily... Okay, yeah, this guy's just flying, so he's barely getting hit by our Nivellet. This is the most annoying thing about these guys. Sometimes they just randomly fly. And you Zhao mains know how annoying knockback can be on enemies in this game, but... Yeah, okay, I mean, we've basically cleared these guys. They should die pretty handily. I mean, one of them's basically dead. Now we just want to make sure that we have all our ults for the second half. And there we go. Now this guy can just die. Oh, we don't have a mark on him, but that's fine because... We can just normal attack on Novelet when we don't have, when we don't want to use his skill or his burst because a hyper bloom baby. Okay, you're being a bit annoying. Okay, there we go. And with that being done, we're already onto the second chamber. That was a pretty easy clear, I would say. So I would expect the second chamber to go quite easily as well. Ooh, okay, we can get ourselves either an EM buff or a HP buff. I would see. I feel like I'm gonna go EM just for the extra vape damage on our Hu Tao since my Hu Tao doesn't actually have that much EM. And then, uh, obviously, it will be nice for the Hyper Bloom damage as well. Anyway, I'm just going to let these guys kind of do their thing a little. I just wanted to battery uh, at the start. Like, like I said, luckily... Uh, okay, yeah, getting frozen there is a bit annoying, but it's fine. Luckily, the Cryo Shield will absorb quite a bit. Uh, unfortunately, we are going to waste a little bit of uh, Hu Tao's DPS window here. I mean, I'm seeing 75k on the charge attack. Okay, that's annoying once again. Um... Okay, what's probably going to happen is he'll put up his shield for a third time. We're going to have to break with Hu Tao, but then we will have a decent DPS window, and we should be able to clear quite handily there. 30k on the charge there, uh, 91k, okay. And now he should get disabled after breaking his third shield. 78k into an all, 201k. 
very nice damage. And then he sh okay, he shouldn't put up his shield for a while now. He I'm pretty sure he's a fair bit easier to build beat in this stage. Once again, I do just kind of want to make sure that I will have all my ults, so I'm just going to go for another skill on Yelan. And now we can just win, basically. 95k, thank you very much. And there we go. That's already the first half cleared in basically about a minute... Uh, okay, minute 15. Slightly longer than I thought, but it's fine. Anyway, the nice thing here is that uh, Nahida will be able to mark these guys for us. Which, you know, gladly gonna take because them being invisible can be a bit annoying. Okay, they do kind of suffer from the same thing as the Fatui operatives where they just get knocked around a hell, a hell of a lot. But it's not as bad as those guys. Uh, okay, the one nice thing here is we can basically line up these guys with their summons. So we should be able to beat everything at the same time. Just want to make sure I get the mark on the bird because that is the most annoying one. And they, okay, there we go. They think basically everyone is down. Okay, if I'm being honest, we don't need to kill the crocodile or whatever it is crocodile, alligator, or whatever the geo summon is. There you go. Okay, anyway, w once again, what we want to do here is we want to kind of make sure we knock the okay, don't kill my cookie, please. I would like my, to keep my hyper blooms. Like I, said, I kind of want to knock these guys kind of into each other so that they get hit at the same time. There we go, just like that. And, I mean, this team is just really good for taking out these guys with shield because one Hyper Bloom, two Nahida's Mark, so... And Hydro, you know, these guys with shield is not going to last very long. Luckily, and that will also apply for the Baptist, and that's the main reason why, if you're going to play Nivellet on the second half, you should either play him in a Vape team or a Hyper Bloom team. I feel like Hyper Bloom is just such a brain-dead team that, you know, you might as well play Hyper Bloom instead of Vape because Vape takes mechanical skill and, God forbid, using mechanical skill in Genshin. And although then again, why would you use it when you really don't need it? You can just put up a Zhongli shield, spam, you know, play hopscotch with Nahida, and then beam everything down with Novelette. So, yeah, there you go. That is the second chamber cleared already. And all that is left in our way is the third chamber, aka where it turns into uh, AoE in the first half and single target on the second half. Anyway, we got ourselves a nice crit and crit damage buff, which I will gladly take. All our blessings have actually been really good in this run, which, you know, big surprise for once. Although, to be fair, actually, in this abyss, when I've done it, I've actually had quite a few good blessings. Anyway, um, oh, oh yeah, it is actually quite nice that we can freeze these guys with Diana. Uh, I mean, the jump cancels on perfect right now. Okay, this guy's going to put a shield up. That's going to waste a little bit of our time, but, you know, he will just die anyway. So, you know, no biggie. Okay, there we go, and he's down already, now we just want to focus the Aramite guy, and if I'm being honest, his lackeys are probably just going to take the hit for him. Oh, I forgot to die on the shield, but it's fine, because we can burst, so, you know, emergency healing when needed. I mean, honestly, people are going to, I I feel bad for Hutao, because so many people are going to be looking at Arlequina, but I mean, Hutao is just still so strong, like, I don't think there's a way to make Hutao bad, unless you release, like, Hutao 2.0, because not even Arlequina can do that, like, you need to release a character who's as good a vape as Hu Tao is. So, you know, you would need, like, the Pyrowalk and the uh, Power Creep Hu Tao, if I'm being honest. Also, I think we saw 100k there on the charge attack, which, I mean, that is because of the Abyss Blessing. It is very beneficial for our Hu Tao, reducing enemies' resistances due to power reactions. Anyway, the nice thing here is this guy will get frozen, which, may, which allows us to do 270k on our ult, which... You know, big damage, I will once again gladly take, and even though our Hu Tao isn't much of an AoE character, we have been able to clear this in about 90 seconds anyway, which means we have a fair bit of time to take down the Baptist. Now, like I said, the good thing about the Hyper Bloom team is that we have quite a lot of elemental coverage here. So, I mean, he's going to start off with his Pyro Shield, which, I mean, obviously we have Novelette for, so, you know, might as well already just get some of his balls on the field. Um, that I mean that in the most SFW way possible. Uh, now comes the Cryo Shield, which is slightly more annoying, but that's what, what we have Cookie here for. And honestly, Zhongli as well. For, like, one of the few times ever we get to use Zhongli Burst and not consider it a stupid decision. Now the is time for the Electro Shield, and he will make a little bit of an escape, but anyway, this just gives us time to refresh our Nahida ult. And the mark on him, and now I would expect him to basically die here for the most part at least. I mean, you know, we're doing 20k on charge attack plus 34k on hyper bloom, so, you know, pretty big damage. Uh, he's nearly dead. Okay, we're gonna kill him as soon as the fire shield goes down, but uh, yeah, that was a Hu Tao double hydro team 
you know, still holds up despite Alokino's release. Very strong team. Don't even need the Shenyun Plunge variant. Just a typical comfortable double Hydro is still good. And then don't overlook Nivellet Hyper Bloom. Although his personal damage may not be as high, the team damage is absolutely insane and it's also a very comfortable and brain dead team to play. So yeah, with that being said, you know, you guys know how good the two teams are. All that's left to do is move on to our character build. So I will do that and see you guys in a second. Anyway, that's it for the run when it comes to our character build. Starting off with our Hu Tao. She's on 75 crit, 231 crit damage. She is on Staff of Homer. Honestly, I am wondering whether for these videos I should level up my Dragon's Bane instead. Uh, that would require me to change her build around a bit, but you know, I am curious to know what you guys think, whether that is something you would like me to do or not. Or maybe I go for a White Tassel, I'm not quite sure yet, but uh, yeah, that's just one thing to keep in mind. I might try switching to one of these, but yeah, anyway, um, you know, just on Crimson Witch, kind of the usual for Hu Tao. Uh, C0, which is why we stick to Jump Cancels instead of Dash Cancels, and Triple Crown Talents. When it comes to the Yulon we used, 65 crit, 172 crit damage, over 200 ER. Probably don't need that much on uh, a double hydro team, but you know, better safe than sorry. And I'm too lazy to change your build because artifact loadouts when thank you very much. Anyway, when it comes to our Syncho, you know, C6, luckily, so we can get away with a little bit less energy. But, you know, why would I do that when I can just run my Syncho on Fav and 220 ER just to be safe and also so we can battery other teammates. Also 50 crit to 118 crit damage. And when it comes to our Diana, she's on basically 30k HP. You know, just uh, on the fab as well for a little bit of battery, but I don't level it up because I basically don't use her burst. And then, you know, just kind of stacking up the HP from the artifacts, two piece, two piece. And she has C6, so we will get a little bit more EM in her burst, but I, like I said, I tend not to use it that much. Uh, her shield is level 11 because it's level 8 plus 3 from constellations. Uh, when it comes to our novelette, novelette is on 44 crit, but this goes up to 80 with Marge to say to 217 crit damage and 125 ER on a R3 prototype Amber because Catalyst builds just don't like me, man. Like I said, for Marge to say, just kind of built how you would expect them to be. Uh, C0 and 1088 talents. When it comes to our Nahida. 9.37 EM on uh, Deepwood for the Danger Red Shred. Uh, you know, just full EM as you'd expect. 200 uh, Sack Frags for the most EM we can get. And then a level 10 skill and a level 8 ult when it comes to our cookie. Level 90 for maximum Hyper Bloom damage, 862 EM plus 150 from Gilded Dream. So that will go up to over 1000 EM. Just on the Umbrella because, you know, like I said, builds don't like me and free to play version, why not? You know, just stacking full EM. Uh, C5, so we do get the nice AoE increase from C1, which is nice in the Novelette team, but then again, we're running Zhongli, so we can just barrel, barrel stuff people anyway. And then C2 for the extra duration, just because to make, you know, uptime a little bit easier, and then talents don't really matter, so yeah. And then our Zhongli, 54k HP, uh, you know, just basically a full shield bot build, if we, you know, if we're being completely honest. Tenacity doesn't really help on this team, but, you know, why change my build when I can keep it the same? Anyway, uh, and 696 talents. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. We will have, once again, more Spiral Abyss videos coming out, as always, as well as more Memory of Chaos Pure Fiction, just general videos for Honkai Star Rail. Uh, Bootal Summons for Honkai Star Rail coming soon, as well as Clarind when she comes out in Genshin. And probably try out a few Wuthering Waves videos, maybe. Uh, actually, definitely, I already recorded a Tillis video that will come up relatively soon. And then also summoning for some of the first characters that come out there. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed. And hopefully I will see you guys next time. See ya.